Alright, this lesson is going to focus on electron configurations. Really all we're going to do is take our orbital diagrams that we were doing in the uh, previous lesson and we're going to simplify them because as you saw and probably if you've done some practice with these already, um, it can get a little tedious to draw the boxes and to draw the arrows. Orbital diagrams are great because they show us how the electrons are arranged. We can see that there are paired electrons, how many paired electrons, how many unpaired electrons. And we'll talk more about where the uses of, of orbital diagrams come in. But what we really want to do is we want to simplify this. So we're going to drop out the boxes and the arrows. Those are going to go away. What we're going to do is we're going to take those arrows that are in here, and we're going to represent them with a number at the top. So we're going to then put a 2 up here just to represent the number of electrons. That's it. That's all we're going to do with electron configurations. So let's go ahead and draw a couple. The idea is that the electron configurations are a shorter hand version of orbital diagrams. So we're going to write the, uh, well, we're going to talk about the symbol in just a little bit, but that would be, let's say this is helium. Well, this is the electron configuration for helium. The number represents the energy level, so that would be your n equals, n equals 1. This is your sublevel or, you know, orbital designation, so this is the 1s, and there's two electrons in that orbital. Okay, so that, that's essentially the, the idea. Okay, so we use exponents as opposed to um, uh, boxes and stuff. So if we're going to draw the configuration for carbon, okay, we need to look at the periodic table to figure out what carbon is. So for carbon, carbon has six valence electrons. Okay, so I need to account for six valence electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one, oops, sorry, wrong button. I'm going to do the one S and I put two electrons in there. Okay, two electrons in the 1s. Then I go to the 2p, and I put two electrons there. I'm sorry, 2s, then I go to the 2p. So 2, 4, 6. Remember carbon, six valence electrons, so I would have 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Uh, two. And that would give me two, four, six electrons for carbon. Okay, and that's what you're doing. Normally we would have done, if we did orbital diagrams, we would have done 1s and we would have put two electrons here, 2s, put two electrons in here, and then the 2p, what I would have done is I would put 1, 2. So if I needed to, I could, I could go back and draw the orbital diagrams, but that takes a lot of time. We're not going to really be doing this. We're just going to take those electrons, put them in here as exponential numbers. They're not really exponents. They don't say 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p squared. They're not squares. They're just numbers of electrons. So this is how many electrons fit in that orbital. S always has, um, remember from before, number of electrons. S always has two electrons. P always has six electrons. D always has 10 electrons, F always has 14. Remember, you can use your periodic table now to figure that out. Remember, these are your S's here, these are your P's over here, these are your D's, and these are your F's. If you ever forget how many electrons are in an S, all you do is you say, okay, here's my S's right here. These two columns are the S. One electron, two electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons for the P. And then 10 electrons for the D, 14 electrons for the F. Remember, all the answers are embedded into the periodic table. All right, so let's draw another um, electron configuration for another element. Let's choose um, something that's a little bit longer. Let's do bromine. It's 35 valence electrons. So bromine, 35 electrons. So I'm going to do 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p, 6, I'm going to fill that up. And all I'm doing is I'm going through the periodic table. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and then back to 4p. And that's where I'm going to end. I'm going to end up on a 4p. All right, so let's go ahead and try that again. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, don't forget about that 4, things are going to change a little bit. Then I go back and I do my 3d, then I finish on my 4p, and I'm going to end with a 5. Okay, so if I add these up, they should all add up to 35. So 6 plus 2 plus 2 gives me 10. 6 plus 2 plus 2 gives me 20 now, so I have 20, 30, 35. So this is my electron configuration for bromine. Okay, all right, how about uh, we do another one?
Oh, let's go back to the periodic table. Let's pick another one. Let's do one way down here. Let's do uh, bismuth because that's going to cover everything. And this will be the full electron configuration covering all the bells and whistles. So bismuth has 83 valence electrons. All right, so bismuth, Bi, 83 electrons. All right, let's do this big boy here. 1s2, P6. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a second because I'm getting tired. I go back to here. What I've done is I've stopped on the... 4p6, right? So I did 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 6p. So right now I'm on krypton. That's where I'm le where I'm leaving off. And that's important. And you know, when you see these, these highlighted for a reason, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, krypton. I got to keep going though. I've got to get all the way down from krypton down to bismuth. So I keep going. After krypton, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do now my next energy level. So this was the 4s and I'm going to do 5s. I'm going to keep going following left to right on that periodic table. So then drop down to the 6s2. Here's really important. 4f14. Everybody forgets the 4f. Why? Because when I'm going along on that periodic table, I go from 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, and I have to drop down here. Remember I have to drop down from here to here. So this would be my 6, 5, 7. So I go 6s, then I go down here to 4f. So this is my 4s. So I have to do 4f and there's 14. Then I come back up and I do 5ds. And then I come back to the 6ps. All right, so that's, that's we're going to end on a 6p, 1, 2, 3. So just by looking at the periodic table, I can right away figure out what that last configuration is going to be, 6p, 3. So uh, if I finish here, I end up 4F4. I'm going to continue kind of running out of room here, so I'll just finish it down here. And I do 5D10 and then 6P3. Let me just double check that was 6P3. 1, 2, 3. And again, if I want to double check, I could add up all of those exponential numbers, and all those exponents should add up to 83 electrons. Okay? Now, as easy as these are, well, as simple as, could you imagine doing these in the orbital diagrams with the boxes and the arrows? Yeah, of course, nobody wants to do that. Now, even this is long, right? This is this can be kind of tedious. Notice what I was doing, though. I, I stopped at one of the noble gases, and this is what's called the abbreviated version. What we can do is we can abbreviate this and do an abbreviated version of our electron configurations by using a noble gas. So it can make things a little bit easier. So let's start with uh, uh, chlorine. Let's, let's do the configure. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do chlorine. Chlorine would be good. All right, so if I do the configuration for chlorine, chlorine has 17 valence electrons. So here's my electron configuration. I now have confirmed that I have 17 electrons that I used. Now, let's go back and look at the configuration. What, let's do the configuration for neon. Let's go back to the last noble gas that we have and do that configuration. Okay, notice the pattern here. Notice that these are exactly the same, right? This portion of chlorine is the configuration for neon. So what I could do is I could rewrite chlorine in another fashion. What I could do is I could write chlorine. What I do is put a bracket here, and I have to use brackets, and I'm going to put the last noble gas that came before it because that's the last time that we had a stable element. So we always use the noble gases as our reference, and then we continue on. So I would say chlorine go back to the last noble gas, and then I would start counting from there. And I would start from neon, I would go 3s, 3p, 5. Okay, so then I would get that last little bit. So then I would do uh, 3s, 2, 3p, 5. This is your noble gas configuration. Now we can go back and do bismuth in that same way. Make bismuth a little bit easier to handle. So if bismuth is the one I'm doing, I'm going to go back to the last noble gas, which would be xenon. All right, so I'm going to start writing xenon. So I put xenon in here. And then I start counting from xenon. So from xenon, I then go down to the 6s, and I start there. So I go 6s, 2, 4f, 14. Don't forget to go back down to that 4f. Then I go to the 5d, 10, and the 6p, 3. So I can take that bismuth one that I did that was really, really long, Right? And I can chop all of that down from here 
to here is the configuration for Xenon. So I can just chop all of that out. We know what that is, the configuration for Xenon. That's how we do a shortcut version of the electron configurations. We can use the last noble gas for that. Okay? Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.